USA Today Suffolk National Poll has Vice President Biden in the lead by nine percentage points. But what happens when you dig deeper? And candidate Joe Biden has officially formed a super PAC. Well, people associated with him have <laughs> after saying that he would not accept such help. So Team Rising is here. Matt Cordoni, he is a Democratic strategist. And Rachel Bovarch, he's Senior Director of Policy for the Conservative Partnership Institute. Welcome to the show, everybody. Great to have you for having us. All right, let's start with the interesting thing on USA Today Suffolk Poll. I talked about this a little bit earlier in the day. So many nuggets here. Yeah, just it's first of all, let's just again marvel in the fact that Kamala Harris is being beaten by Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang. But Tulsi, who she once yes, dismissed as like top -tier getting one percent or whatever. Top tier status here. Um, but let's also, I mean, Joe Biden in this particular poll, major warning signs, Rachel. He has dropped nine points since August in this particular one. 26% he still holds the lead, but Elizabeth Warren at 17, Bernie Sanders at 13%. The real question, I think, or at least on my mind, is when is it actually going to implode? Because all of the signs remain there. What do you think? We are, I yeah. think, increasingly getting to that point. Yeah. I think two things about Joe Biden. One, you know, we've seen for a while he's been out of step a little bit with his party. Mm -hmm. He seems surprised about how woke his party is and how woke <laughs> he is not. Right. Uh, but second, and I've been saying this for months, yeah. do not underestimate Elizabeth Warren's ground game. And I mm -hmm. think you're starting to see the results of that. Sure. She has one of the most organized campaigns. Uh, she increasingly is the face of the progressive movement. And so I do think she's creeping up on Joe Biden and he is stumbling and I think you're gonna see that continue yeah I don't think it's the well I mean the partly yes the uncomfortable like stories about corn pop and record players and bathhouses like yes that's that's a problem um, but I think there's also a kind of bigger issue about questioning whether he really is mr. electable right when you see him having trouble articulating himself getting confused about his own policies mixing up countries mixing up states he's in etc these are really gaffes it just makes you question Question rather this is really the person to take on Donald Trump well what's interesting is you know this poll is part of a larger picture I think the only poll that's really going to give us any indication is the one from the Des Moines Register right before the caucus mm -hmm. so you have to remember that Iowa and New Hampshire go first but what these national polls do is reinforce media narratives and sort of cues the activists are looking for on the ground when you look at other polls or other focus groups where you talk to voters in Nevada Iowa New Hampshire South Carolina and I spent a lot of time in those places this summer, the one thing they say is, we just want to beat Donald Trump. And they might like other candidates, but they're convinced that Vice President Biden is the one who can build the broad, diverse national coalition mm -hmm. to do that. So even though it's gotten tighter, and races always get tighter as we get closer to Election Day, Biden is still showing nationally he's the person who people believe can go head to head with Donald do Trump. You think, do you think anything could shake that? Because, I mean, his money, he's the big money candidate, but he doesn't really have any money, right? He doesn't, it's hard to imagine him doing anything but get destroyed on the stage with Donald Trump. Right. So, what is it that people see in him as electable? And is there anything that could shake them off of that view? Well, we've been waiting for somebody to shake that since April, and it's gotten tighter, but everyone keeps saying Biden's going to stumble and fall and totally collapse, and he hasn't yet. And we're running out of time for that to happen. I mean, but we've got 100 days. <laughs> yeah. We have 100 days. And, and the real thing is, and this is, I mean, look, Biden voters, we covered, I've covered this many times, they're the lowest information supporters, right? So there are people who don't watch the news, they don't particularly watch the debates. What they look at is like, oh, yeah, Joe, he was vice president. I they, they think 2008 Joe Biden is a right. very, very different man for 11 years later. And so, I think the more exposure he gets, the lower he's going to fall. The question is if that happens in the next 100 days. I actually agree with you. I've said here before, I think he could still win. I yeah. absolutely still think he could win the nomination. I would say it's more like 40-60 at this point, whereas, what, three months ago would have been 70-30. Well, I yeah. think yeah. the other ingredient here, yeah. too, is how he plays in this impeachment narrative, yeah. because he is a part of this narrative, yeah, right? That's right? Point. Yeah. Yeah. Whether he likes it or not, and I do think that exposes a little bit of that sort of, you know, even if nothing was illegal, it's that self-dealing sort of self-enrichment thing that voters yeah. loathe right. and he may end up being collateral damage from this impeachment probe which no one saw coming See, at all. I, I kind of think it's the opposite though I think that's yeah. right in the general election it's a mm. massive problem for him in the general election because Hunter Biden sitting on a board making 50k or 80k or whatever like nobody looks at that and is like right. oh you earned that of your merits and right? doing it, it looks, multiple yeah. times across yeah. multiple countries right. yeah. Yeah. It looks, right, exactly. yeah. Yeah. And, that I mean, was just one deal yeah. for a general election that's gonna be a big problem but on the Democratic side they don't want to touch this stuff they they want to give him a pass on it because they don't want to do, do or say anything that looks like it's helping Trump. So in a way, this has all inoculated him from attacks from Democrats during this process. Well, you see this when people go after Joe Biden, right? Um, 
when Harris attacked him, that's when she started to fall. Democrats have a varied visceral emotional reaction to Joe Biden. He was Barack Obama's vice president. He represents safety and comfort and stability, the thing we all long for right Just now. Just ask yeah. him, he'll tell you. I, don't, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I disagree that, you know, this impeachment is a liability for him, especially yeah. when you have, you know, Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump and Don and Eric Jr. doing the same things. I don't yeah, think... Yeah, but, his, it's, don't all think about, but it's, it, it, it's all about muddying the waters. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. saw the same playbook with Hillary Clinton. Again, I'm talking about the general election. I think in the primary you're right. But when you're trying to parse the case that, like, well, your kids are worse than my kids, right. that doesn't really land too strongly, especially when Trump is not claiming to be, like, a, a, a paragon of virtue, right? Joe Biden is running on his values. That's yeah. what he's putting front he's and center. He's claiming the moral and high so ground. It's, yeah. yeah, and if you want to do that, then we're going to and we're gonna have to litigate this. And right. speaking of that, of course, the vice president, who swore off super PAC money, and actually he even said in a 2018 interview, we played it here on the show, Hilarious. he said, I gave Bernie the idea <laughs> to not take any super PAC money. Okay, <laughs> Bernie like, didn't need, Bernie was like, oh, I'm going to take these billions of dollars. <laughs> yeah, he was just he's ready. Like, <laughs> he was like, I was bird. ready, but then Joe swept in. <laughs> And he was like, "No, you can't, you can't do this, Bernie." And Joe was I'm like, "Save you from your yeah." He's like, "I'm going to save you from your corporatist self." <laughs> just um, like he set up the CFPB okay. for Elizabeth yeah, yeah, just Warren. like he set up the CFPB. <laughs> so, uh, based on all that, the Biden campaign is effectively gr greenlit the formation of the super PAC, the treasurer of which is a foreign, a registered foreign agent for Azerbaijan. <laughs> so, Rachel. Is he an Azerbaijani asset, yes or no? Well, now yeah. we must impeach right. him and decide. And he needs to deny yeah. it on the record that he <laughs> right. is an Azerbaijani asset now that we've set that. Yes, there's a, there's a ton yeah. of investigations we yeah. must do, a, me, a yeah. million media spins we must, right. do, we must right. engage right. in. Right. But I will say, like, this is always my favorite part of the campaign cycle when mm. everyone's like, dark money is bad, until yeah. they're like, dark money is what I need. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I need to, it now. I need to mainline the dark money. And this just goes, I think, to who Joe Biden is, though. He's a creature of the swamp. He really is. And this is sort of the swamp territory. We see it across the board, and this now, you know, I, I don't want it, and now I need it. Well, yeah. and it's been the worst of all worlds because he's already tagged as the big money candidate. Yeah. I mean, he's flying around. He spent a million dollars on private jets, <laughs> not campaigning, going yeah. from fundraiser to fundraiser. It's just not working that well. And so he's tagged as the big money candidate, yet he doesn't have the big money. So, look, I mean, honestly, if I was advising Joe Biden, I think this is the wrong thing for our democracy. But if people are always, already going to see you as bought out by corporate interests, <laughs> you may as well go all the just way lean, in, buddy. Lean into just the go in, just, yeah. just go for it. I have the hot takes more broadly on super PACs. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, I think, look, you know, uh, every Democrat, including Joe Biden, would say that we need campaign finance reform. How do you get that? You have to win back the White House, the House, and the Senate. What does it take to do that? Money. Republicans are going to be taking as much as possible from every which way they can get it. Sure. And throwing it at 2020, but, we can't show up to a knife fight. You walk in the walk or what? Right. Yeah. But, wait, wait, but who's winning the money fight? It's not the big money candidates. It's Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders who aren't doing this crap. And but I also think there's some candidates who, you know, are trying to push these purity tests that President Obama just warned us about. I think there are some Democrats who want to win moral victories and other Democrats who want to win elections, and I would put Joe Biden in the latter category. Well, let's and I not think, forget, though, yeah. that, that yeah. Hillary Clinton outspent Donald Trump yes. $300 million, and right. she still lost. Yeah, so absolutely. I think chalking this up just to money is not I, the right I, Rachel, yeah. you're completely Especially right. Especially in presidential yeah. races. Look, and at the local level, it makes a much bigger, honestly, it makes a much bigger difference. But whoever the candidate is, yeah. whoever the nominee is, you know they're going to have plenty of money to compete. It's not going to be an issue. But it matters a lot, not just for the campaign, but for government. Who are you accountable to? Mm. And so, again, Democrats forever have said, well, sh once we get there, we'll get the money out of politics, but we're going to take that sweet, sweet money now. And voters basically, when they voted for Donald Trump, called bullshit on that. Yeah. One of his undersold appeals, I think, was that he sort of exposed this whole system. They felt like since he was rich, he wasn't going to be corrupted by it. And I think that's a big part of why they voted for him. And Ryan Grimm actually made an excellent point on this show, which is that what essentially what this allows is this allows unlimited spending to up his name ID and maybe keep that float of the 26%, which he needs, in order to make sure that he could still win, or at least place like second or third or whatever, get enough delegates going to the convention. But the fact that he has no actual grassroots fundraising base means he has no chance in the general election against Donald Trump because he's red flag. only 
only 31% of his donors are less than $200. 98% of the Trump campaign's donors are less than $200. It's a true grassroots fundraising operation paired with a professional one. If all you got is this professional super PAC stuff, forget it. I think we no call chance. that astroturfing. Yeah, it is astroturfing. A, a Literally. Remember that from the Tea Party days. <laughs> yeah. All right, stick with us. We're going to have more rising right after this.